Hi there, welcome back to MA211. Let's talk about system identification. So let's talk about a second order initial value problem. We're going to talk about basically mass spring damper systems. So I'll use the M, C, and K again. Um, and let's see. Um, so we've got a standard second order constant coefficient initial value problem. Maybe you have a forcing term here. You've got some initial conditions. Uh, don't forget that the transfer function of the system, if I'm using m, c, and k for these coefficients, the transfer function is 1 over m, s squared plus c, s plus k. Um, so notice that the transfer function depends only on this left-hand side. The transfer function has nothing to do with the forcing term. The transfer function has nothing to do with the initial values that you supply. It has only to do with sort of the intrinsic properties of the mass spring damper system. Okay, so suppose that I tell you what the transfer function for a system is. Suppose I tell you the transfer function is 2s squared plus 3s plus 9. Um, from the transfer function, then you can tell what the mass in the system is. The mass has to be 2. The damping coefficient has to be 3. And the spring constant has to be 9. So suppose we were in a situation where we had an object sitting on the end of a spring and you're in some environment that provides damping and you say um, but you just find the setup and you don't know what the mass is you don't know exactly how much the mass of the object is or how much damping there is um, but someone comes along and tells you aha I know for some reason that the damping or that the the transfer function for this system is 1 over 2s squared plus 3s plus 9 from that you can infer, well, the mass of the system has to be 2, the damping coefficient has to be 3, and the spring coefficient has to be 9. Okay. Um, so, when I talk about system identification, I'm talking about sort of a backwards problem of what you're used to. Usually we know the coefficients for the spring mass damper system and we want to tell we want to predict what the motion of the system will be if we uh, apply some initial conditions or some force. In a system identification problem, what we're going to do is this. We're going to say, I don't know what the mass of the object is, and I don't know what the spring constant is. Um, but I'm going to to apply an external force and measure the resulting motion and see if I can figure out what the mass is, what the damping coefficient is, and what the spring constant is. So it's a backwards kind of problem, okay? Um, so let's see, yeah, a practical way to do this is to do an experiment. We're going to apply some initial conditions or a forcing term to the right hand side of the DE and then we're going to measure the system's behavior so what we'll know is the solution to the differential equation what we won't know is what exactly the, dif the differential equation was okay um, one popular method is to use the impulse response of the system um, that means I use a delta function on the right hand side okay so let's do an example of this okay so suppose I have an unknown mass attached to a spring with an unknown damping and spring constant Okay. The system is initially at rest and at equilibrium, and I'd like to figure out what the mass is, what the damping is, what the spring constant is. Um, so what I do is at time one, I whack that mass with a hammer, and I impart a total impulse of one newton second. Um, and then I measure the resulting motion, and here it is. I've measured the resulting motion. It's that thing. And now what I do want to do is find the mass, damping, and spring constants. So I want to figure out what's the ODE that is solved by this equation. All right. So um, what I'm going to do is first I'll write down the ODE just sort of in general terms. Um, so I'll write it down. I know that this function solves an ODE that looks like this. Um, uh, let me see, the right hand side for this ODE was I hit the mass with a hammer at time one, so it's delta t minus one. My total impulse was one newton second, so there's a one here. 
the initial conditions were y of 0 equals 0 and y prime at 0 equals 0. So I know that this ODE solves this differential equation, this initial value problem. What I don't know is what the MC and K are. So let's see, what I'm going to do is I'll Laplace transform this differential equation and I'll get an expression for capital Y. Notice this Y and this Y are exactly the same. So what I'll do is I'll Laplace transform this differential equation. I'll get an expression for the Laplace transform of Y that has MC and K in it. And then I'll Laplace transform this thing, uh, this function, because this function and this function, these are the same guys. I'll Laplace transform this one and I'll get another expression for the Laplace transform of y. And then the two have to be the same. Okay, so let's see, I Laplace transform this thing and all my initial conditions are zero, so what I'll get is ms squared y plus csy plus ky equals, and then that's an e to the minus s, and so y is e to the minus s times one over the transfer function ms squared plus cs plus k. All right, so that's one expression for the solution of the differential equation. That's one expression for the Laplace transform of the solution to the differential equation. Okay, now I know that the solution to the differential equation has this formula, so I can Laplace transform it, and I'll get another expression for the solution of the differential equation. So let's see, I know that capital Y is, if I Laplace transform this guy, I get one-fourth, and I'm multiplying by a Heaviside function, so it's e to the minus s times the Laplace transform of, I have to shift these two forward by one, I get e to the minus 2t sine t. All right, and so that is one-fourth e to the minus s, and I'll have the Laplace transform of sine t shifted by two, shifted forward by two, so this is 1 over s plus 2 squared um, plus 1. Okay. So look, I've got two expressions for the exact same thing. On the one hand, I know that the Laplace transform of y is this much. On the other hand, I know that the Laplace transform of y is this much. So I know that e to the minus s times 1 over ms squared plus cs plus k has to be equal to this much. That's, I'll write it as e to the minus s times 1 fourth times 1 over s plus 2 squared plus 1. Okay, now I'm going to simplify this guy until it looks like the other guy over there. So that is e to the minus s times 1 over 4 times s squared plus 4s plus 5 and that is e to the minus s times 1 over 4s squared plus 16s plus 20. Okay, so what do we know? We know that e to the minus s times 1 over ms squared plus cs plus k is equal to e to the minus s times 1 over 4s squared plus 16s plus 20. So now we can see our m is 4, our c is 16, our k is 20. Okay, easy enough. Let's try one more example. Um, so suppose we've got a system, it's, it's another mass spring damper system. Again, we don't know the mass, the damping, or the spring constant. Um, the initial position and velocity at time zero are both zero. And at time two, I supply an impulse of magnitude three to the system. So it's an impulse, again, I hit it with a delta function. Uh, the resulting motion is this thing. Um, find m, c, and k. Okay? first thing we'll do is we'll rewrite um, before time zero the mass wasn't moving. So we'll write y of t equals it, it's a heaviside function times, and let me just write this in a better way. 
um, this negative one half I'm going to write it as a um, e to the negative t minus 2 and this is negative sine of t minus 2 and then I'll bring the negative out and, and kill off this negative sign and I'll get a one half here okay so this is the exact same thing as y okay um, so let's see first thing I'll do is I'll write down the differential equation that's solved by the system right so this expression here is the solution to the initial value problem my double prime plus cy prime plus ky equals and I said I supplied an impulse of magnitude 3 at time 2 okay and I said the initial conditions were 0 and 0 okay so this guy is the solution to that differential equation now we just have to figure out exactly what the differential equation was so again what we'll do will Laplace transform everything and get an expression for the Laplace transform of y in terms of mc and k then we'll Laplace transform this one and get an expression for the Laplace transform of y that doesn't have any unknown coefficients in it and then we'll be able to tell what mc and k are so I Laplace transform this thing and again all the initial conditions are zero so I'll get ms squared y plus csy plus ky equals 3e to the minus 2s I'll solve for capital Y get 3e to the minus 2s times 1 over ms squared plus cs plus ky okay that's one expression for the Laplace transform of Y another expression for the Laplace transform of Y is let me see y is equal to I have a heaviside function there so it's e to the minus 2s times the Laplace transform of oh there's a one half there and let's see I have to shift everything forward by 2 so that's e to the minus t sine t again so that is e to the minus 2s times one half times and what you get here is 1 over s plus 1 squared plus 1 okay and again now we're just going to set these two expressions for the same thing equal to each other and then determine what MC and K are from that so let's see on the one hand we know that um, e to the minus 2s times 3 over ms squared plus cs plus k is the Laplace transform of y and on the other hand we know that it is also uh, e to the minus 2s times 1 over 2 times 1 over s squared plus 2s um, plus 2 okay so now let's just go ahead and put these two in the same form so let's see this is e to the minus 2s times 1 over 2s squared plus 4s plus 4 okay now these two aren't exactly the same yet in order to compare them I'll need 3 in the numerator up here so this is e to the minus 2s times 3 over 6s squared plus 12s plus 12 and now they're the same right now these two are exactly the same and we can read off that m is 6, that c is 12, and that k is also 12. And really that's about it for system identification. You just um, find two expressions for the Laplace transform of the solution to the ODE, and then do some algebra so that the two expressions are in the same form, and then read off what MC and K are. And that's it.